Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm. Today I'm going to be discussing one of the projects that um, came in my so what box. Uh, first off, I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying that there are easier ways to work this that will work out and make your sewing look so much better. And what I'm specifically talking about is they have you sew this all together then flip it inside out you can actually make this as two pieces and put the topper on much easier and it will avoid this um, each one of their pre-cut pieces doesn't fit the circle so first they have you make this piece okay with this this and this then they have you put in the bottoms um, and because they have all this sewed together, you're actually working with it reverse. Okay, so it would be, let me turn it right side out. They actually have you working with it like this. Okay. So when you get to the end, and because the uh, material hasn't been cut precisely as needed, you end up with this big bubble here. And on the one with the uh, batting or this interfacing you have an even bigger one i'm gonna guess that that is the full part of my finger times two because it folds over that is not acceptable and it makes these sit here's the other one i tried it twice just to make sure that you know they're and i did it right off their video because i don't want tori to have to fuss with these but Here's the other one. It also has a big thing in, hmm, the way they do it, they say pin it on and then put it, yeah, it doesn't work. So, um, I'm going to rip these out. I'm going to show you an easier way to make these. So stick around. Okay, so yes, I ripped it all apart and there is a, a much simpler way to do this so first your um kit will come with two long pieces wider pieces of fat oh, going too high sorry about that two wider pieces of fabric an accent piece and two round circles and then you will have interfacing but since i've already started this kit the interfacing is already attached okay once attached you're fine so the one thing you want to do is make sure that your circles for the bottom lining and the uh, outer oops sorry <laughs> for the outer part and the bottom lining are really close to the same okay you don't want them too off um and this is where the kit goes terribly wrong because as you can see I've got different lengths here of all of them of the rectangles so yeah and they're not cut even so they're not oops sorry they're not cut straight they're at an angle so that's creating more bulk more fabric the cutting is what is important in a pre-done kit and this one I don't know if somebody just got for cellist or what um i know that last time i did this kit i had that uh, pocket um, zipper thing and i said it was more complicated than it needed to be so um yeah it, it just doesn't need to be that complicated so we're going to do this in the simplest of fashions so you know iron everything it's going to come with seams you're going to take and put your interfacing you're going to iron it onto this remember to use the cotton side because interfacing um will melt and be yucky you know so you don't want to ruin your iron ironing interfacing so just make sure you iron it on the cotton side once you get your interfacing on it you're going to fold it in half and iron that seam that right there okay you're going to grab your other uh round circle you're going to fold it in half and you're going to iron it 
Okay. Now it doesn't matter if you iron the pretty sides together or the uh, right sides to get makes no difference. What you want is that seam. Okay. Don't care. I just want that centralized seam. Okay. So we're going to set those two apart or aside. All right. And again, um, the outer lining will have your uh, fusible interfacing on it. You're going to iron it on with the cotton side down. Okay. So now mine has been sewed and redone and yeah, ripped apart. All right. Then we're going to take this and no matter what the length, um, if you follow the pattern, it should be close. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you. It should be pretty close. Okay. Then we're going to take that and we're going to fold that in half. And again, we're going to press that seam. Okay. And we're going to do the same to the liner. Okay. We're just going to fold it in half. And, and this is exactly what I'm talking about when I say that the seams are cut at an angle and they're not very careful. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it it's definitely off center. So anyway, we're going to fold this in half the best we can. And we're going to iron it and make a seam at the center. Turn it over. Sorry. Okay. So once we get our two circles and our seams, this is where it gets, I don't know. You don't have to be precise with it. Okay. So I have decided that I want my lining to look like this. I want this to be the upside direction. The lining doesn't really matter. Um, especially if it's, you know, anyway, so then we're going to pin and we're going to take that, that, uh, iron spot that pressed seam, I guess you'd say, and we're going to pin that over the seam with the thing. Now this does two things. We now have the cent it centered. Okay. Now, as we go around this, okay, and we pin this, this is going to come together and we're going to stop at the next pressed seam. All right, now that ensures that we are going to go all the way around the uh, thing. So here's my pressed seam and I'm literally just pinning this now mine, of course, I've pinned and tried to do it their way and made little uh, notches so that it would sit flat like it was supposed to. Yeah, that didn't happen. So we're literally just going to go around like this and get this. Now, I did notice that when I was doing this, uh, the the lining had less of a pucker than the uh, thing. So when you get here, I've got my, and I like to put a little pin in the center here just so I can see where I'm going. Um, when you get there, you want to just leave this flat. Okay. And then we're going to come back and we're going to pin this side and we're going to go around it. Now, I do want to stop because we're going to do both sides. I, I'm not going to make you watch me do both sides. Um, but what I need everybody to understand is the fact that when you get to the lining, I like to find a nice bottom, however I want the design to sit when I pick it up on the bottom. Okay, so I kind of have it the way I want it. Doesn't really matter. Now this is the part that matters. Um, there is a top and a bottom to the printed side, printed design. Okay. It's not abstract and that you don't want the birds upside down. So when you do this, you're going to lay it out so that when you're looking at it, everything is in the same direction. Okay. 
So you're looking at it. Here's my little birds. They're all lined up right and they're lined up with this guy. Okay, so this is um, the bottom and this is the top and all of the fabric is going in the same direction. Then you're going to flip it so that it's wrong sides together. All right, this assures you that when you sew and you turn it right side out, it's going to have the right sides up like it's supposed to. So then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pin the centers together and then we're literally going to pin this together. And as we pin this together, we will see that it will come together more centered on that other back. And this is just an easier way to make this nice and make it not have that big pucker. Anytime that you're making a bag with a rounded bottom, I prefer to do it this way just because it all comes out better. Um, now remember, we're stopping just short of this line right here. Okay, and here in a minute, you will find out why we'll overlap them and do it. So let me get this side going. Okay, so I've done half of it, right? Now we're going to come back to this side and we're going to do this side. Okay. And basically we're just rounding around the edge here. Now. This is literally going to be like two seams for each half for the outside part and the liners part. So we'll have a rounded seam and a straight seam, and then we will have the top binding to put on, and that's it. So the rounded seam in this, um, that one off. the rounded seam in this one is going to be the hardest just because it's got this interfacing. With this interfacing, it's going to be um, a little bit stiff to work with. So, yeah, is what it is. All right, now I've got this all pinned. And guess what? We're going to pin it. Now, I put my little pin here at the center. Okay. Literally, I'm going to, I'm hoping you can see it. There's this thing where you fold it in half. So these are going to come together like so. You're going to make sure that you pull them even with this line, okay? Because they'll have a tendency to go in like this, okay? Because they're going around something round. You definitely want to pull these two up. You can see where that little crease is. You put that crease in there. And you're going to come back and put a pin right there on each side. So you're going to, you can do it either way. I'm going to do this one first. Uh, where I've got that pinned together. And then I'm physically going to pin it to the bottom. Okay. So this pin right here is going to be your actual line that you're going to go up and down with this. Okay, so we're going to eyeball it and voila. Okay, so we're going to make sure that these, and then when we go back, we'll do a seam up here. I literally use the seam allowance on the machine to make sure that I'm getting, oops, sorry, iron going off, to make sure that I'm getting the same width across there. Okay, so this is ready. We're going to, um, I'm going to take it over the machine. I'm going to go all the way around 
okay? And then I'm going to leave this from here to here. I'm going to go up this, okay? And then I'm going to sew that. I know it sounds complicated. It's not, I'll show you here in just a minute. Okay, so I know it's a little bit further away angle than I wanted, but hey. So now that I've got this pinned, I'm literally just going to go around here. I'm going to leave an inch or so open where all three of these join, okay? So we're literally just going to go right around here, okay? So let's do that. So now my pin is plugged in the bottom. And as you can see, there's a little hole. Okay. So when this comes to here, when this comes to here, I'm literally going to bring it together like so. Put these. I can see that's where the uh, thing is. That is where my pin will go. Okay. Now I'm going to leave a space and flip that out that way. And I'm just going to, this sounds ridiculous, but I'm just going to, where that pin is, um, I am literally just going to use the gauges on my machine. I do want to get it straight though. Okay. So. Make sure that you've got it kind of straight. Put you a couple pins in there. Um, the pins are not really to mark anything. It's just to hold this together. Um, I know that that very first stick right there is the one that I need the stitches to go on. So literally that's what I'm going to line up. I'm going to use the gauges here. Line that up. And here we go. There's my iron again. Now, with this like this, you will see that this goes perfectly together, okay? But one of the things you want to do is trim this so that you don't have all this bulk. You don't want all this bulk that's already been seen down, you know, you don't want all that. So you just want to trim it. Uh, what a regular seam allowance would be. Um, of course, I don't really have my scissors, so I'm going to use my nippers and I'm going to leave uh, maybe a quarter inch seam allowance because I do want to um, be able to lay that flat so top and the bottom. Okay, so I've taken that off. That is all of the extra bulk and the inch um, that was in the bottom. So now I'm going to open the steam up and I'm going to pin all of this around. Okay, and I always start with the seam right there. And I just have this right here to um, sew. I might as well put that in. So, all right, start right there. I'm not even gonna pin it, you guys. I, I know you're supposed to, but 
and now we're just going to go right around that edge and close up that little hole that we had. All right, now when that when you do all of that, we are going to go back and press this open because we still have the top thing to put on it. When you do it like that and you do it right, you have a nice clean bottom. Okay, and I'm going to literally do the same thing. There's the inside. I'm going to do the same thing to the lining and then I'll show you how to put it back together. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take this and turn it right side out and just give it kind of a little press. Put your fingers along that uh, inner seam and just kind of make sure that you're getting it so that it stands up. And it actually should. I don't press out the inner seam. I do press this one out because we're going to have to sew over that. So I do take my iron and kind of touch that. Be very careful doing it. And I do also um, press this seam out. Um, now this one looks like it's inside out, but it's not. Um, we actually are doing really good. That one you can just set aside for now. Okay. Then you have your accent piece. And we are going to start again. This sounds ridiculous, but we are going to fold this bad boy in half. Give it a little press. And we still have our little line right here from where we press this from the half seam. So we are going to put those pretty pieces together. We are going to start here and we are going to do the same thing. We are just going to sew it at this top point. Okay. Um, we're going to put it around here. We've got the centers. We're going to just go and the seam is literally just going to go around the top. And again, once it meets together right here, we're going to do that little same little inch trick, leave the inch open, seam these up and then do it. So, but we're attaching it to this. Um, there's a reason I don't want to do this step before I put the bottom in. And I will show you here in just a minute. Um, and it just works out a whole lot easier. So I'm going to get this pinned on and then I'm going to go and seam it around. Be right back. Okay. So as you can see, I have um, seamed that on the top, done this the same way. Now I'm going to flip it up, I'm going to drop in my. Uh, lining and I'm going to take some time and I like to line the back ones up just so that I have one distinguished back seam. Um, I know that sounds silly. I, you don't have to, I guess, but uh, yeah, I just like to. So I put the bottom at the bottom, center seam, and then I just kind of get it in place. And I like to kind of line up my bottom. You don't have to. You just have to line up the top to do this next part. But I like to see that the bottom is going to line up rather nicely. And I don't know. It's just me. I like for it to align up. All right. Now I've got my tops. And if you look, all of these come together. So you're literally going to fold this in half. Fold it over, and this is the final seam. You're going to do that all the way around it. Um, you can pin it, do it. I actually just do it as I go. I start with the back seam right here, line everything up, fold this over, and that way I know that all of my back seams are done, and then I start to one side or the other of it. And it's literally going to go like that. The thickest part is going to be right here. And that is because your um, interfacing is thick and your stuff. But this is super easy. So this is, you can pin it or you can just do it. I just do it at the machine. And all the tops come together. And you fold this down and you seam it. And it's going to look like that. So, yeah. All right. 
I'll be right back. Okay, so here it is. I started with the seam, just went all the way around, you know, folding it over and folding it under. And uh, yeah, here it is. All nice, even. And just for the record, none of these i have just a little bit here that was taken off a lot here that was taken off and then a little bit here that was taken off. so these two and this is what was probably creating the issue because it was the big pucker so while these were probably cut right to size these were not and so therefore it makes a big pucker but as of right now i have one done and there is another one that i'm going to do and I'm going to do it the same way. So I hope that that helps you um, fix any pucker that's in your thing. Or, you know, you can just try it this way instead of their way. Uh, just depending on what you want. But basically, you're going to construct the outside. You're going to construct the lining. You're going to set the two together. And you're going to bind them off at the top. Um, not only that, it's easier than pulling it through that little hole that they said to leave. So yeah it is what it is so if this helped you let me know if it didn't well let me know that too i'm sure it will help my daughter thank you talk to you later bye